So today we look at a woman who is called Countess Marjorie who is undoubtedly the bravest woman in Irish history. Her self-determination to progress her political career and to show the world that she's a woman and she's proud to be a woman and she's going to fight for her rights and for the people's, the women's rights of Ireland. And for that, she was the first MP ever elected to the British government, but she didn't take her seat as Sinn Féin does. Do not take their seats in the British government and didn't swear allegiance to the king. But she was the first elected ever to the British Parliament or to the Irish government. So, And that's a huge step. Other countries so, and in Saudi Arabia, they never had a woman in any position of government. Like you could say that I probably had a, maybe a queen or something back years ago. But Countess Maltrafix was the first woman who was in a political war in Ireland. Like, it's, it's, she was a remarkable independent woman. And I can't really say it. She went in 1916. She was the leader of a battalion, which is a very, very high war of honour to have in any military standards. And as the 1916 proclamation said, Irish men and Irish women in the name of God and in the dead generations for which she proceeds. So they say Irish men and Irish women. And it's supposed to show equality. So this is a huge, huge thing. Years ago, women's vote would never been, would have been laughed upon. But Countess Maltrafix is a woman who was like, I have enough of this. I, she, well, she didn't care what people thought of her, and that's really the balance of Countess Maltrafix, and that's all in a nutshell. She didn't care what people thought. She believed in what she believed, and she was going to fight for what she believed. And she joined the 1916 Rising in Dublin. She was in St. Stephen's Green, and she was the leader of the battalion, though, and which is a fierce, fierce high war of honour to have in anything and she fired at the British army coming at her she f- literally and she they say killed one or two British soldiers which is a, an unbelievable thing in 1916 she a woman shooting at the British army was a ridiculous thing and with the 1916 the heroes the, were the surrender of the rebel forces she went to Chameleon jail the same as Willie really Alderman because she was a high leader in the 1960s, she was supposed to be executed. But as we all know, the, the other heroes of 1916, James Carney, Patrick Pierce, Tom Clark, McDonough and Pierce and everybody else, she wasn't executed, mainly because she was a woman, too. Because it looked very bad to her. The whole world was looking like this empire is killing innocent men for standing up for the whites. And if they killed Countess Maltrafix, I think she would have probably said something smug to them because she would have she would have took the stepping stone to more freedom if you know what I'm saying but thankfully she wasn't killed because she was the first woman to be elected to the House of Commons in the British government which is an remarkable achievement I mean it's if you think about it when we got the vote in 1918 the first election that Sinn Féin could go and where Sinn Féin won the majority in Ireland which was yeah to this day 15th she got it for Dublin South, and she got it, she was top the polls. And the whole Sinn Féin alone topped all the polls in Ireland. Ireland and uh, the Home World Party was uh, completely, nearly annihilated, only about 12 seats in the whole country. And Sinn Féin completely dominated. And this woman, this woman called Countess Maltrafix, remains the greatest, greatest woman in Irish history. Because she led so many people to fight. Not in that generation, but in generations to come. She wasn't executed in 1916. But she became a national hero after. Because, take about it here, whatever but they take for side. 1916, two years later, what came along? The election. And she was in the election. And people say that she shot two or three British soldiers. And the next thing you know, she was elected to the British government after killing two or three. And after nearly being killed by the British government. Just think about that. She didn't take her seat, but just think. Like, that's a remarkable thing. That's a fierce, fierce determination. 
Because if that was me, I'd be like, hell no, I'm not going into the government. Or even go and stand in front of the government. If a government, if I was nearly killed by the government, you know. But she had such determination in herself and such lack of fear that she was going to take on them and literally be like, I don't care about Jews. And that's literally what she said. And that's what remarkable thing she done. But she is, she did fight in, the, she did fight in Easter Wisen in the War of Independence and the Irish Civil War. But she didn't really play a big part of it because as you know the Irish Civil War was fierce heartbreaking and it was Irish brother forces, Irish brother and all that. But as I was saying about her whole legacy, in uh, the 1970s and the 1980s and all of the church had a huge, huge war in this country and cut deception and... Uh, gay rights and all that wasn't supported and wasn't held up and the church was like that's the gets and it's, it was in the constitution of Ireland at the time that was banned and people went out and protested and people the only people where women went out and protested and they were, you know what they were like and in the constitution of Ireland at the time it said women's places in the home and loads of people at the time went out and said countless matrifix would have done the same thing as we are doing and that's what happened Women went out in protest and the government were brought under such pressure they had the chains open. And they did allow contraception in. Because them, them women said, we are going to admire and to get the spirit of Countess Maltrovix and to fight for what she would have fought for if she was here today. And that's for equality. And that's for the people's say, the people's government. And that's what she would have fought for. And so many people at that time stood up. And that's all because of Countess Maltrovix. Because women got the courage and they were like, look at Countess Maltrovix, if she could do it, we can do it. And they were all like, yeah. But sadly, Countess Maltrovix died in 59, on the 15th of June, 1927. But for 15 years, of, 59 years old, she achieved huge, huge thing. Huge, huge. Like, it's undoubtedly the most historical woman of our generation. Nearly in Europe. There wouldn't be a better person. The only people I could think about in Europe at the time was um, Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands. Um, or undoubtedly thing, but I can't see in my head any revolutionary people you can see in America, you can see some people in America who stood for black rights and all I know I know but that but not in Europe. We've never seen such a woman who was determined who showed the British Empire that one woman could stand up and get into the government of Britain. And we all remember Countess Maltrafix as a true, true hero. Because people of this generation doesn't understand what she went through to go through. It was obviously hard, but she had that courage and that strength to move forward and to do it. And that's because she loved Ireland and she wanted the best for the people of Ireland. And we should all take now, if she was here today, would she be happy? With homelessness crisis. Would she be happy with people lying. Dying on the streets. Would she be happy. With the government not helping the people. Would she. We should ask. Because this woman. Give all. Her service to this state. And to our cause of freedom. And to women's rights. Across this island. The stepping stone. To women's rights. I just want to say. Countess Maltrafix is a great, great icon, and I do recommend looking her up if you do want to learn any more about her. Uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. Uh, just to say, she is buried in Glasnevin Cemetery. I was not at the grave, but I do plan to go when I'm in Dublin next, because I didn't get the time when I was there in Dublin last. But I will do it, I will do it, I will do it, and I will lead a wreath and all that, if I can. So, yeah, just... If you have one glass and have a please go and see Countess Martha fix his grave and say that you were set by me and say that she was a hero because there's no way other to describe it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Bye.